beautiful people you're welcome back to my channel my name is Sinka so in today's class I'm going to be showing you how to make this beautiful gown so let's get started so I'm having three yards of fabric here so I don't know whether we're going to finish it or not but this is three yards so first thing I'm going to do is to cut the upper part of this uh, style and to do that I'm going to be cutting the back first you can see it's a drapey fabric it's very soft it's called duchess satin you can use chiffon satin not a very thick satin all those soft satin you can use it you can use duchess you can use crepe you can use any fabric that drapes easily you know that is what you can use for this style so i'm going to be cutting the uh, upper part first but i'm going to be cutting the back part of the upper part first so i'll be folding my fabric into two I'll fold my fabric into two this way. So I'll rule a guideline to have a starting point. So it's an off shoulder dress. So this is my guideline here. So because it's an off shoulder, I'm going to be minusing five. So I'll place five on my guideline because I'm minusing five. It's an off shoulder dress. So I'm going to measure down the length of my hand hole. And as you can see from the picture, it's an off shoulder dress with a spaghetti hand. So I would not want my happy to be showing. Normally I'm supposed to use nine for my hand hole. So I'm going to use eight and a half. I can even use eight because I don't want it to, to be showing my hand piece. So I'll use eight inches for my arm hole. So this is my arm hole line. And then I will measure my waist length with my same allowance. Then I will extend the lines. All right, so I'm going to roll my zip allowance. This is the back, like I said. So I'll roll my zip allowance. I'm using one inch as my zip allowance. So this is my zip allowance and don't forget to enter in by half inch on the waistline so that you can plant the zip allowance to avoid bulging at the back. All right, so this is my zip allowance. This is my guideline, which is the starting point. This is my arm hole length. This is my waist length and this is my seam allowance for the waistline. So at this up, upper part, I'm going to input my neckline. I'm going to be using five inches for my neck width. So I'll measure five inches this way. I'll place it at this starting point. So on this arm all line, I'm going to input my bust circumference measurement divided by four. My bust is 40 divided by four. That will give me 10. So I'll start from this line. So I'll measure the 10 with one inch seam allowance. So I'll come to the waistline, I will impose the waist circumference measurement divided by 4. My waist circumference is 32 divided by 4, that will give me 8 inches. I'll measure 8 inches here. And then I'll add my seam allowance of 1 inch. If you like, you can put that, but I don't want to put that on this towel. So I'll connect these two points together this way. Can you see? So the next thing is to draw out the shape of the armhole. So you connect from the neck width to the armhole. So this is what we have now. So for your neck depth, you can do any shape. So from the guideline, I will just measure one and a half inches and I'll connect it to the neck width. That will be my neck depth. So for my neck depth, I'm going to measure one and a half inch from my guideline this way and I'll connect it to the neck width. So this is it now. So I'll cut this house and I'll use it to cut the front. All right, so the next thing is to cut out your zip allowance. So notch your zip allowance. So you'll be cutting facing for the back. So I'm just going to use the pieces that I have here to cut out facing for the back. So 
So place another fabric into two folds and then place the back on top of it. Then you trace the neckline area and then you measure, measure three and a half from the ham hole and then trace it and then you cut it out. So once you trace it like this, you can take off the back. So you measure from the neckline, you measure three and a half towards the ham hole. From the neckline, you measure three and a half. We are done cutting the back. This is how it looks. We are going to be using this to cut out the front. But before you do that, you need to fold your zip allowance away this way. Fold your zip allowance and then you pin it. You can see our zip allowance line here. Fold it. Fold it this way and pin it. So you pin your zip allowance. All right, so in order for you to cut the front, you place your fabric on bias fold. You place your fabric on a bias fold. So this is my fabric. I'll place it diagonally like this. Then you place the back that you already cut out on top of it. Can you see? You place it like this. You place the back on top of it like this. You can see that we have some hairs here. From the center front, we will have about three and a half inch. Yes, exactly three and a half inch from the center at the neckline. You have excess of three and a half inch. But the waistline needs to be equal. The waistline needs to be equal. So can you see, you place the, the back on top of it this way. Place the back on top of it like this. Can you see the way I placed it? You will ensure the waistline is equal can see the waistline they need to be equal on the waistline this is the waistline here you can see that they are equal and then this is the the neckline area we have excess of about of about three and a half from the center can you see so what you need to do now is for you to cut out on the waistline you cut out the side seam so you cut out on the waistline you cut out the side seam then you cut out the ham hole can you see? So from the ham hole, you measure three inches like this, and then you blend it back this way. All right, so I'm going to be cutting it out now, and I will show you. Okay. So from this neck width, you can see this is our neckline, and this is where the neck stops here. So just place your tape measure you know the facing for the back is three and a half so measure the three and a half like this in an angle like this can you see then from here now you cut it out connect it this way can you see the way i've done it so out you cut out the ham hole when you get to this point cut on this line and then you connect this way hope it's clear the distance from here upwards 11 inches all right, it's 11 inches. Can you see the way it is? So this is the front and this is how it's looking. So if you open it up, you have this. You have cut out the facing together with the body. Can you see? That is how to cut this off shoulder, shoulder cow neck. I'm going to be showing you how to sew it on the sewing machine. So for you to cut the down part, you can see this is my fabric. You place your fabric in a diagonal form like this. Can you see? Fold it diagonally like this. The fabric is folded into two. You can see it's folded just into two. Diagonally like this. So the first thing you need to do is to look for where you will find your waist, your waist circumference measurement divided by two just two so i'll look for a position where i can see my waist circumference measurement divided by two my waist circumference is 32 divided by two that will be 16. then i'll add one inch for my zip allowance because it's going to have zip at the back so that will be 16 plus one that will be 17. so i'll look for a position where i can find 17. so 
so I have 17 here I have 17 here so from this point I'll rule it into a straight line this point here now is my waistline so add same allowance of half inch to this line because you are going to be joining it to the upper part next is for me to place my waist length on this line my waist length is 17 so i'll place the 17 on this line that i ruled i'll place the 17 on top of this line and then i'll measure down the length of my gown i want my gown length to be 44 so i'll measure the 44 can you see and i'm putting that length at this open part because this is the back part of this pattern now and you can see it's open here this is the zip allowance part all right so i'll put the length that i want which is 44 with my seam allowance that will be 45 that would be 45 all right so from here now i'll measure the length that i have here i'll measure the length that i have here so all together here i have 28 inches so for the front part of this gown i'm going to multiply this 28 by 2 that's going to be the length for the front all right so this place is going to be your center front you can see it's unfold this part is going to be your center back and you can see it's open because of zip allowance all right so you place your waist length on this line my waist length is 17 i'll place the 17 on this line and at this part at this back at this center back i'll measure down my desired gown length my desired gown length is 44 then i added my seam allowance of one inch so that is 45 i'll measure the 45 so this is my gown length and then this is the seam allowance making 45 so i have 45 inches here so the next in order for me to get the length of the front because the length in front will be different from the length at the back all right so from this point here from this waistline i will measure to my length so here i have 28 inches so the front length is going to be twice this measurement so in front now i'm going to measure 56 inches because we need twice the length of this one all right so at this center front here from the waistline i'll measure 56 inches downward so i'll come here now and i'll measure the 56 inches so this is the 56 inches so the length in front is twice the length at the back all right so from this point here i'll connect it to the back length Alright, so before cutting it out, you may want to check whether your hip measurement is up to what you want. So, from the waistline, you can just measure 8 inches downward. That will be your hip line. And then just confirm whether you have up to your hip circumference measurement divided by 2 at that point. So, my hip is 42 divided by 2. That will be 21. So, I have that with my zip allowance and also with SS. Alright? So you can just confirm before you cut it out if you don't have up to that you may need to like reduce your waist length so that the width you have here can accommodate your hip circumference measurement divided by two all right so i'm going to cut it out now all right so the next thing you need to do now is for you to put notches at the center front notch the center front at the upper part and also at the down part it is very very important so you notch it this way so the next thing we are going to be cutting out now is just a strip bias strip that we're going to be using to form the to form the spaghetti and so this since this line is already in bias cuts you can see stretching it's already in bias cuts because of the flay that I cut. So I'm going to be using this part as the bias. So the bias is going to be two inches. This 
the length of your bias strip is going to be twice your armhole length here twice the length you have for your armhole twice the armhole here twice this measurement at this my armhole part i have seven inches twice of seven inches that will be 14 then plus twice the amount that you subtract for your off shoulder for my own off shoulder i minus five inches so twice of that will be 10 that is five times two that is 10 10 plus 14 that is 24 inches so the length of my strip is going to be 24 inches so you can just make that to be 26 so that maybe when you finish what you're doing you can cut off the excess you understand so you need 24 inches and you will need two of that so i'm going to cut another one now to make it two all right so the first thing we need to do is to finish the neckline with facing For us to finish the neckline with neckline with your facing but before you sew your facing you need to finish the hem of your facing this is the hem of my facing i'll just fold it once like this and then i'll stitch on it finishing the facing is for you to place the right side of the facing the right side of the facing will be facing the right side of the neckline like this and then you are going to stitch the facing to the neckline with half inch seam allowance. With half inch seam allowance. But before you get to, you know we notch our zip allowance part. You can see we notch our zip allowance. Before, you will not sew it up to your zip allowance. You can just stop maybe half inch before you get to your zip allowance. Because we will be using this facing to finish the zipper part. By the time we finish attaching our zipper. So don't stitch it all the way to the end of the zip allowance so stop each stop half inch before you get to your notching for your zipper all right so i'll go ahead and stitch it now notch it and then you turn it to the wrong side You turn it to the wrong side this way. Can you see? So you can take to the ironing table now and press it flat. And then you will now stitch this part to the handhold part. Can you see? Do the same thing to the second one. So this is what we have now. All right, so you keep the back aside and then you walk. This is the front. So basically we already cut out facing together with the front pattern. So this part here, you can see this is how the front is looking. This part here, not the waistline, this is the waistline here. This part here, so you are going to be finishing this part here by just folding it this way. This is the wrong side. This is the wrong side. And this is the facing for the neck part, the cow part. So fold it just once like this, and then you're going to stitch on it. Fold it by quarter inch. And then you stitch on it. So when you are done, fold this flabby part to the wrong side like this and then make sure this arm o part is like this and then you are going to stitch this uh, this extension of three and a half that you have there you stitch it together this way you also do the same thing to the second part can you see this is how it is. You can see this angle, fold it to the wrong side, and then you stitch the ham all together this way. All right, so the front is ready. Can you see the way it is? 
the facing is kind of longer than the waistline right now but that does not matter by the time you finish sewing you will understand it better so this is your waistline and you see the way it is so the next thing we need to do now this is the front this is the front you can see the arm o for the front this is the arm o for the front so we need to finish the arm o with our bias strip so this is one side of the back and this is the wrong side and this is my arm o side so i'll place my bias on top of it like this and then i'll stitch on the arm o side so that i can finish the arm when I get to the end of the ham hole here, like this, I will measure twice the amount that I off for my off shoulder. If you remember when I was cutting, I minus five inches for my off shoulder. So I'm going to measure that five two times, making 10 now. So I'm going to measure 10 inches and I will note that point. Can you see? I will note that point. So I'll jump to this to this point and then I'll bring the corresponding side of, of the front. So this is the corresponding side of this of this now. So this is the front. I'll place it at the arm O. You can see that thing that I marked, that mark. So I'll place it on top of it. Then I'll stitch together. Add the arm. all right so this is what we have the next thing now is to turn to the right side and then you are going to top stitch your bias on top of it like this so fold two times like this and cover your seam make sure you cover your seam like this and then you top stitch the bias on top of the arm hole. Can you see when I get to that 10 inch that I have there, you see, you fold the two raw edges together this way. You fold the two raw edges together this way, and then you are going to make your stitch. Till you get back to the second hand hole. So this side is ready. You also do the same thing to the second side. We are done with the upper bodice. The next thing you want to do now is to close the side seam. If you remember, I added one inch for my allowance. So I'll match the... See, I'll fold them together like this right side to right side and i'll close the side with one inch seam allowance because i had it just one inch allowance so i'll be closing with one inch allowance so i'm done closing the side and this is what we have can you see this is what we have next thing you want to do now is to join the lower part together with this all right all right so this is the down part so you open it up you open it up this is the waistline you know we notch the center so match them together Match them together at the center and then you are going to join together with half inch seam allowance. So you join it together with half inch seam allowance. So place the, the right side of the upper, bar, upper part to be facing the right side of the lower part. Place them on top of each other, right side to right side. Make sure they align properly. 
so we are going to join together with half inch seam allowance join together with half inch seam allowance All right, so I'm done joining it together on the waistline now. You can see, I'm done joining it together, together on the waistline. So turn it to the right side like this. Turn it to the right side. From the picture, you can see that the pleated, the ruched part was at the center in front. This is the front part from here to here is the front part. You can see so locate the center of the waistline so this is the center of my waistline so and if you remember i notched the center of the down part also create your pleats like this your hand to gather them all till you get to the center from beginning to the end like this can you see so now when you already gather everything up this way you can now arrange your pleats so that the pleats can be equal. So arrange the pleats the way you. All right, so I'm done gathering everything and after placing everything we have about nine inches all right so i'm done the next thing i want to do now is to close the center back and also attach my zipper from the waistline at the back you measure nine inches downward you measure nine inches downward and from that nine inches you are going to close all the way down with the seam with the zip allowance that you added i added one inch for my zip allowance so i'm going to close it all the way down with one inch attach my zipper so i will attach my zipper this is my zipper you can see the way it is okay so the next thing you want to do now is to finish the neckline you know we didn't completely sew the facing to the neckline when we were sewing the facing so now Place the facing on top of the zipper so that you can conceal the raw edge of the zipper at the upper part like this. You can see the way it is. So place the facing on top of it and then you stitch the facing to the zipper side. So when you get to the, this point, keep the needle in and then you pivot, you rotate the fabric and then you continue stitching like this. This way you'll be able to cover the raw edge of your zipper. Can you see? So by the time you turn it now, the raw edge of the zipper will be nicely finished. Can you see? So you do the same thing to the second side. Just cover the zipper. Just cover the zipper with the facing this way. Can see how beautiful and neat it is ensure your lines are equal here on the waistline also let them be on the same line all right so we are almost done the next thing to do now is to hem the bottom part of the gown i added one inch for my allowance so i'm going to just fold two times like this all right so i'm done hemming the bottom part and then our gown is ready so it's still remaining one little step that we're going to be doing to it 
but that will be after i had fit the style i know that everything is okay then i'll show you what next to do just one more step all right so i'm loving it it's giving me the effect that i want but the only thing like i said when i was saying is you still need to do one little step that's why i did not do it so that i can show you how it is before that little step all right so you can see that it's open now i think they are not wearing anything inside all my private to be showing so this is how it is so the next thing you want to go and do so just arrange it the way you want it in front like this you can see how it drapes nicely the drape cross cut across you understand you can see how it drapes nicely all right so the next step that you want to go and do now is for you to go to the sewing machine and then you see from here from that point in front, this is the front, this is the center front of the damper, this is the hem of your, of your dress, all right? From this point, you are going to just fold together like this, and then you are going to stitch the two hem together. You stitch for like about 15 inches. You stitch about 15 inches together. All right, stitch about 15 inches together from the center front. Just match the two hem together, and then you stitch about 15 inches. And then, that's it. Your gown is ready. It's very pretty. You can do the ruche at the side also. It must not really be in the center front. The ruche can be by the side. All right, so this is how it looks. It drapes nicely, and uh, the cow, I love the cow. The cow is so fine. I said don't forget to add these two front pieces together so that it's not going to be opening your body. 